I'd like to call the Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018 Papillion City Council meeting to order. Ms. Chapman, would you please take the roll? Florence. Mumgard. Here. Gaines. Glover. Here. Jaworski. Here. Kluke. Stuby. Here. Ingberg. Here. Do we have a quorum? Yes, we do. Thank you. We've got uh, Boy Scout Troop 405 with us tonight, and they're going to come up and lead us in the pledge. Gentlemen. Thank you very much. Do we have an affidavit of publication on file? Yes, we do. And a current copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted in the back of the council chambers. Ms. Myers, administrator's report, please. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple quick things. We were just talking with Scout Troop 405 about social media, and uh, coincidentally, the police department is going to be having a training session on social media security and cybercrime that they're providing to all of our city of employees, city employees. Um, we're scheduling that for Wednesday, November 7th, and any council members that would like to attend will certainly send that out to you as well. Um, and lastly, um, next week, Jeff, Amber, and I are having our kickoff meeting with the consultant that's beginning the water and sewer rate study. So again, once we have those draft results, we'll be meeting with the Finance and Administration Committee to present and to gain feedback. So that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion, motion by Councilman Engberg. Second. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Five A zero nays. Motion passes. Item D one, ordinance eighteen twenty three, a resolution to approve a change of zone from A G agricultural to M U mixed use for the property legally described as part of the northwest quarter, part of the southwest quarter, part of the southeast quarter, part of tax lot four A, tax lot four B, part of tax lot five and lot one, phase first edition replat one, all located in section 35 township 14 north range 11 east of the 6 p.m., generally located on the northwest corner of Schram Road and Highway 50. The applicant is Serpy County Economic Development Corporation. Is there a council member that will introduce? I'll introduce. Introduced by Councilman Stubbe. Item E1, Ordinance 1821, an ordinance to approve a change of zone from R3 urban family residential to R4 multifamily residential for the property legally described as Lot 1 Mosaic Edition, generally located at 530 East 1st Street. The applicant is Mosaic. This is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing, and do we have any proponents? Is the applicant here? Do we have any opponents? Anybody neutral? I'll close the public hearing. Item E2, Ordinance 1822, an ordinance to approve of changes zoned from Agricultural AG to LI Limited Industrial for the property legally described as attractive land located in the south half of the northeast quarter of Section 35 Township 14 North Range 11 East of the 6 p.m. Sarpy County, Nebraska, generally located on the northwest corner of Highway 50 and Gold Coast Road. The applicant is Development Services Corp. r, &R Commerce Park Phases 2 through 4. Open the public hearing. Proponents. Mayor Brent Beller, uh, 1144 West Center Road, appearing on behalf of the project applicant, I might, thank you. 
Um, so there's two matters that are going to come before the city council tonight. The first is the rezoning. Uh, there's four existing lots on this development. We have phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. What's currently before you is a rezoning of phase two, three, and four. We've already rezoned uh, phase one to LI, and with this request, we're requesting the same that uh, two, three, and four also be rezoned to LI. So here for any questions, we appreciate your consideration. Thank you very much. Do we have any other proponents? Do we have any opponents? <clears throat> Close public hearing. Item F1, Ordinance 1820, an ordinance to approve the vacation of a portion of the alley right-of-way legally described as the west 7 feet of the east 70 feet of the south 44 feet of lot 7, block 18, Papillion, a subdivision in Sarpy County, Nebraska, generally located on the east side of 129 North Washington Street. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1820? Motion by Councilman Jaworski, second by Councilman Mumgard. Any council discussion? Please vote. Five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F2, resolution R180164. This is a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a special use permit to allow daycare services adult as a permitted use on the property legally described as Lot 1 Mosaic Edition, generally located at 530, I lost my place. East first. Um, this is a public hearing and I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? I'll close the public hearing. Do we have a motion to approve resolution R180164? Motion. motion by Councilman Glover, second by Councilman Ingberg. Um, council discussion, Mr. Mumgard. Yeah, I'm just gonna dig back in history and just make an observation. Uh, really doesn't have anything to do with this um, application, but this sits next Ne right next to North Grandview Avenue, which has been blockaded off because at some point that was being used as a cut through for people to get out of that neighborhood. <laughs> I, I just want to go back into history. At one point there was a plan to have one of those three streets come all the way down to East First Street. And, and when I looked at this, I thought we all ought to remember that at some point one of those three streets has to come through to First Street, whether it's North Grandview, North Beetle, North Osage, I have no view, but um, since this is coming through, I'm glad this is where it's sitting. I uh, just remember how we had an issue there about using North Grandview as a cut through and uh, can't be done anymore, but we really do need to get to the point where we make that neighborhood more accessible. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Please vote. Five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F3, resolution R180165, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a revised preliminary plat for the property legally described as attractive land located in the south half of the northeast quarter of Section 35, Township 14 North, Range 11 East of the 6 p.m., Sarpy County, Nebraska, generally located on the northwest corner of Highway 15 Gold Coast Road, the Applicants Development Services Corp, r, &R Commerce Park. Again, public hearing. We'll carry the comments over from the previous one, but the applicant is here. Any other comments as a proponent? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. Brett Beller, 1144 West Center Road. Um, so what's before you today is just a, um, a revised preliminary plat for uh, lots one, two, three, and four. This was the preliminary plat that was initially submitted. Um, lots one, two, three, and four. This is 146th Street. Um, this was gonna be a stormwater basin. We don't no longer need that. So in the revised preliminary plat, it's almost like an eye test, right? Not much different other than we've moved um, some lot widths, uh, moved 146th Street to the west a little bit, which actually coincides with what some folks are doing to the south of us. Uh, it'll make 146th Street line up with that interchange. Uh, and again, we won't need that basin over on the west portion. So uh, just reconfigured some lot configurations and we appreciate your consideration. Thank you very much. Do we have any other proponents? Any opponents? Close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve resolution R180165? Motion. motion by Councilman Stubbe. Second. Second by Councilman Jaworski. Any council discussion? Please vote. Five yeas, zero nays. 
Motion passes. Item F4, Resolution R180170. This is a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve the downtown redevelopment plan pursuant to the Nebraska Community Development Law subject to the LCRA and city staff's ability to make minor amendments as needed. This is a public hearing. I'm going to call for proponents. I'm going to do something unusual, and I'm actually going to speak as the applicant and be a proponent. But instead of running all the way over to the podium, I'll do it from here. Um, I think it's the first time I've done this on an item in probably 10 years. But the reason I want to do it is it's a very unusual item for Papillion. It's a co very common in the state of Nebraska, but it's the first time Papillion's ever done it. Um, some people might look at a redevelopment plan, wonder what it is, um, but a lot of people know what TIF is. And this is the, this is the legislation and the structure that enables TIF. And um, because it is new, I want to give a little bit of an explanation of what we're doing. Um, Papillion has never tiffed a project in our history. Um, TIF is for redevelopment of older areas, and um, the reason it's usually offered is for a developer to redevelop an area um, that's got some issues. Um, there's an inherent cost to that, and TIF is a way to use some of the incremental value um, to take some of the property tax and put it back to help cover some of those costs. Um, so by Setting up a redevelopment area with a redevelopment plan, we are not necessarily committing to do TIF, um, but we're enabling the ability to do TIF if we feel it's appropriate. Um, and so what we have done is we have created an actual district, and it's in the public documents, um, but if people are familiar with the area around the old public works building, uh, the original fire station and some of that area, that's where the, where the uh, redevelopment area is. Half of that area is publicly owned land um, and half of it is private land. Um, and so it could be a public-private partnership, but in doing the redevelopment plan, it is not requiring the public landowners to do anything. They can continue to use their property, they can use it as is, they can sell it to whoever they want. But if they choose to do a redevelopment along with it, it enables them to get into a partnership with a developer to have TIF enabled. Papillion's specific plan or desire is if this plan is pr approved, then um, shortly thereafter, we will do a public request for interest to the development community to say who wants to redevelop the public lots. And so what we'll look for is kind of a master plan of the public works, the fire station, and, and the old rec building, um, kind of a vision for that area, and then a specific proposal for redeveloping the public works, um, and shortly followed with the rec building. And so we will send out a public request for information. When those come back, we will have a selection committee put together and they will um, review and score those and kind of stack rank them and come up with a short list of developers then to invite back for an actual request for proposals. And then a developers can then participate in that process. We'll make a selection out of that. And then hopefully we'll be selling some ground and partnering with somebody on a redevelopment project. So. Um, just, I know there's probably maybe a lot of questions, but I just wanted to do a real quick intro on a topic we've talked about for a long time. With that, I am going to call for any other proponents. Anybody want to speak in favor? And if you come up, if you'd state your name for the record, and if you represent an organization, who that would be. Welcome. Hi, Kim Ehlers, uh, owner of Kajama's Boutique and also the president of the Downtown Papillion Business Association. I'm actually here today representing the DBA. Uh, we've had the opportunity to speak a little bit with Tom Mumgard, and we are, uh, as many of you know, we've worked very hard over the past few years developing downtown Papillion, really reintroducing the community by creating events that are bringing our people back downtown. Um, new businesses have moved in. Many of them are starting to buy the properties. So we are very excited to partner with the city on this venture, um, bringing old side meshed with new side and working together to really create a, an atmosphere that will keep our community here in town where we can work, shop, eat, play, everything all together. So thank you. I hope you'll consider this development. Thank you very much. And some may ask who's on the first selection committee. And as we do the makeup of that, we will specifically ask for a representative of the Downtown Business Association to participate in that. Um, any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Anybody neutral? 
I'll close the public hearing. I will make one quick comment just for people that might be interested. Uh, we have a web page put up specific to this redevelopment area. If you just go to papillion.org, go to the mayor's page, there's an economic development tab and there's a downtown plan on there with a lot of documents related to this, including a uh, drone video overview of the area as well. With that, is there a motion to approve resolution R180170? Motion by Councilman Ingberg, second by Councilman Stubbe. Council discussion, Mr. Mumgard. Yeah, I would just ask, would you, would you or the Assistant City Administrator lay out the timeline uh, for when we're gonna move through the steps? There are some deadlines, I think, in the material. And then more importantly, if everything moves along according to our hopes, when will a project be back in front of the City Council for really the decision? Ms. Powers. You're right, Tom, in the packets, there's some information about that. Uh, we will, if this is approved tonight, we will move forward with seeking those proposals like Mayor Black had said, and we have a tentative deadline to receive those initial proposals of December 14th, and then having, cr then create the selection committee to make uh, recommendations and bring those back to the LCRA and then have the LCRA determine which ones they want to seek further information out of those proposals, and that deadline is uh, February 22nd. And then after that, following um, the, that additional information, then set up interviews and have them kind of um, tour the facilities to, to really hone in on what those projects are. And then following that, then we would need to, before it goes back to City Council, um, make changes to the redevelopment plan. This redevelopment plan is absent any projects, but the, the plan does need to include whatever redevelopment projects are selected. Um, so at that point, it will go back through the process of planning commission, public hearing, city commission, or excuse me, city council, um, public hearing process. You want my opinion? What I've been talking to staff about, because we've, we've talked a lot about the time frame, so it's reasonable to give the development community to respond back, and uh, so we've been having a lot of conversations. I would say my desire would be June, July time frame, we're working on a real project. You bet. Um, just one other quick thing on the process because this is new. People hear about the LCRA. That is a new committee we've never had. So usually on a development project, something goes to the Planning Commission. Planning Commission has hearings, takes a vote, makes a recommendation to the City Council who then votes on the project. With a redevelopment plan, there is this new body called the LCRA, which are appointed uh, by the mayor. It's, uh, it's seven individuals in our case. And so they're almost a second plan, uh, planning commission. So the LCRA kind of manages the process. They then make send items, refer items to the planning commission to make a recommendation back to them. They then take that feedback and make the recommendation to the city council. So we actually have two bodies almost playing a planning commission role that are interacting. So a lot of public hearings and a lot of votes. Mr. Stubbe. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. So uh, TIF is something that, from my experience in Omaha, there's a lot of confusion with regard to how that really works. and. And it's, it's one of those tools that developers can use to make it um, essentially beneficial not only to the developer but to the community also relative to redeveloping structures that, that might have a, a challenge with it. Um, it. It's not using any city tax dollars or any tax dollars that are going to other entities. It's only the incremental increase that's used to pay off the TIF loan. So I know the city did a good job with regard to putting out some information related to SIDs. I think it might be beneficial for the city to do something similar in that, try to maybe get ahead of it so that when we do get to a point where we have some development proposal in front of us, we've done a pretty good job of kind of educating the community out there. We'll do that. And if people are wondering what he is referencing, we put together a uh, two-minute video um, explaining what an SID is because it's a lot of confusion um, of what an SID is and what their roles are. So if anybody's interested in that, it is up on our YouTube, YouTube page. Just go to the City Papillion on YouTube and it's archived out there and it was just published. Um, any other comments? Please vote. 
Five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item F5, resolution R180178, a resolution to approve the sales and use tax refund reserve policy. Is there a motion to approve resolution R180178? Motion. motion by Councilman Ingberg. Second. Second by Councilman Glover. Um, do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Uh, related item F6 for resolution R180179, a resolution to approve the Papillion Landing Sales and Use Tax Reserve Fund Policy. Is there a motion to approve resolution R180179? Motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second. Second by Councilman Ingberg. Any proponents? Any opponents? Any council discussion? Mr. Ingberg. Uh, just to remind everybody from the previous council meeting, um, this came before the Finance Administration Committee and uh, discussed it and recommended the council uh, approve it. Um, these two policies, the uh, F5 and F6, both relate to being very transparent with the public about uh, our process and funding projects. And also, uh, it will help us uh, make sure that councils and mayors that follow us have a, a blueprint to follow to continue with that transparency and, and be good stewards of, of our revenue. Thank you very much. Any other council discussion? Please vote. Five yeas, zero nays. It's all the regular agenda items. Committee reports, I believe the audit committee report uh, met. Is there a report out of that? Mr. Mumgard. Uh, yeah, the audit committee are met tonight for the second consecutive month simply because we wanted an update on some recommendations that had been made a year ago for um, operation of the golf courses. Um, as you might recall, a year ago during the 2017 audit, uh, we, uh, we had the auditor do a specific audit about the golf courses. We looked at that operation as being one that, uh, because of the large cash flow that goes through there, is one that we have to pay particular attention to. And they did an audit. They came up with 11 different um, recommendations for um, modifications in the procedures to have a more secure cash flow, more secure system. Uh, we met tonight with the golf course personnel and they went to they reported to us that they have implemented eight out of those 11 um, recommendations um, several of them that i think are very important and they're going to make some significant differences in um, tracking to make sure that the money that comes into the golf course doesn't go out in an inappropriate way and um, there were three of them that we discussed further uh, a couple of them we said well we're gonna have to give some more thought to that see if it's really something that would aid in uh, the security that we're looking for there but um, it was very helpful and the and overall the golf personnel have and the staff have done a good job of um, following on the recommendations that our auditor made and uh, we the audit committee will continue to um, observe that and we in fact talked last at our last meeting about doing something similar with the swim the swimming pool operations uh, concessions at the at the uh, soccer fields etc those kinds of operations which involve a lot a lot of cash operations um, but all in all we commend the golf course uh, personnel for following the recommendations of the auditor and uh, making things more secure Thank you very much. Any comments from the floor? Anybody want to make general comments? Seeing none, any council comments? Just a few th updates from the last couple of weeks. Uh, attended the League of Nebraska Municipalities Annual Conference in Kearney. Um, also, the we partnered with the Sarpy Museum and gave a historical walking tour of downtown. Probably had about 90 to 100 people show up for that. 
Um, and there was a call by that group to do some more tours. And actually, I think it's October 10th or 11th, they're going to do one of Cedardale Cemetery. Um, people may wonder why they would do it there, but actually there's a lot of history there. There's some homesteaders that are buried there. There's 13 Civil War veterans. Uh, one of those Civil War vets has a Medal of Honor. Um, so there's a lot of really cool stories in Cedardale. And so I think it's October 10th or 11th, the museum's going to do a walking tour and uh, share some of those stories. Also attended the Sarpy County Economic Development Board meeting. Uh, main topic was Project Wizard that will be coming for us. Uh, we introduced and we'll be continuing to work on that. Um, also just a reminder, some things for the calendar. There's a lot of things coming up. Um, tomorrow is the MAPA annual meeting. If you're not registered and you want to go, um, let, let us know. Uh, Thursday is the Nebraska Chamber Legislative Forum. And uh, next Tuesday the 9th is a ribbon cutting for Citizens State Bank. They're out of Wisner and they're coming to Papillion. Uh, Wednesday the 10th, the Chamber's got its annual awards banquet. Um, so again, if you want to come to that, let us know. Wednesday uh, the 11th is a ribbon cutting for r, &R Realty. Uh, that's an important one. That's a 250,000 square foot industrial flex building. Um, that area at 50 and SRAM is probably the hottest industrial area for the entire Omaha metro area, and that's the first big, large building that's opening. So I'd encourage you to come to that ribbon cutting. And then back to downtown with the old businesses, Grayley's Ice Cream is having a ribbon cutting on the 12th. With that, we do have a closed session tonight just because we have a lot of scouts. I want to explain that real quick. Um, everything we do um, when a majority of the council is together and can take a vote has to be out into the public for people to see, people to watch, people to monitor, and all of the votes are out here in public. There's only a handful of times when a majority of the city council can go behind closed doors at any time and be together and have a discussion. Um, and about the only times is if it's a personnel issue and we need to talk about somebody. For, uh, you don't necessarily want to do that in the open because it could disparage them. Um, and so they can go behind closed door for personnel issues. Thankfully, we never do that. Um, the other one is if there is contract negotiation. So if we're negotiating um, on a contract, obviously we don't want to talk into the public about what our negotiation strategy is because the other side then would understand it. And so we can go behind closed doors and talk about strategy. No votes can be taken behind closed doors. So we can only have a discussion anything we vote on has to be back out of here in the public. And um, there's actually a state law uh, that says once we go behind the closed door, the only thing we can talk about is what we said we would talk about. And if we start talking about somebody else, something else, somebody actually has to call them out and say, stop talking about that. And if anybody violates either one of those, it's actually a misdemeanor crime. So it's very serious uh, when we do it. So with that, is there a motion to go into closed session to protect the do we have some students here besides scouts? You got to come up and uh, introduce yourself at the podium. Students have got to come up. Thanks for catching that. Um, hi, my name's Jordan Hall, and I go to Papillion La Vista South High School, and I'm in 11th grade, and I'm here for my government's class. Thank you. Any others? Just go ahead and line up. Come on up. Hello, my name is John McClung, and I also come from Pavilion La Vista South, and I'm coming here for my 11th grade government class. Thanks. Good evening. I'm Chris Convoy, and I also go to Papillion La Vista South High School, and I'm in 12th grade, and this is just, you know, for AP government, so howdy. <laughs> I'm Ethan Morgan. I'm also attending uh, Papillion La Vista South High School. And I am also here for my 11th grade government class. Uh, hello, my name is Benjamin Schultz. I'm here for my 11th grade uh, government class, and I go to Papillion La Vista South High School. Thank you very much for coming out. So with that, is there a motion to go into closed session to protect the public interest to discuss contract negotiations? Motion by Councilman Ingbird. Aye. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Five A's, zero nays. Motion passes. I will state for the record the purpose for the closed session is only to discuss contract negotiations. The closed session will include the mayor, city council, city administrator, assistant city administrator, assistant city attorney, the planning director, and the city clerk. <laughs> 